Okay, well, I guess we can open the meeting um, since we are uh, uh, since we're here. Um, and uh, let me just. Uh, Ta-da, there we go. I have my iPad with my agenda on it, so I just work from one screen to the other here. Um, just so it's right up front, I'll let everybody know that the 271 Main Street, we didn't get any information they were supposed to send to us, so um, it doesn't look like we're gonna be moving that along tonight. Um, if I could uh, uh, cut in, I, we, this is Benjamin Berry with Fabo Architecture. Uh, at the uh, for the pet supplies plus project yep. um, we did send we sent over some uh, PDFs uh, just a little while ago and uploaded them to the server and then I emailed them to Danielle as well well except that we don't have we haven't had it it's not been sent to us we haven't reviewed it and that's going to be just a shade difficult uh, unless Danielle unless you think we can uh... I can um Let's see. I can. Um, I, I see. I see the files. They did come in a little while ago. I can put while we're talking because I know that this wouldn't open until eight anyway. I can upload everything into the share file so that you all can at least see them and then decide what to do if you, you know, I haven't opened them yet myself. I, they just came in. Um, I can work on that now. Okay. Um... Okay, um, do you want to, well, you, first of all, we ought to take a look to see if all of the issues that were brought up, I, I, we do have a list of them there, that were, uh, if, if they're all properly addressed. So uh, if that's something you want to continue on with, Danielle, I, if you think we can get that all together. Um, I mean, I won't be able to give it any thought and go back to my notes from last meeting to like really compare yeah, anything. Really review it, yeah. um, I'm happy to send it along to you so you can have it and see it. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's up to you. I can start downloading them and putting them in the share file now um, yeah. while we're speaking. I can do that. Yeah, but then we got, then I got to go back out and go back in on the share file to get it in. So I don't know if it'll just pop up. You might just be able to refresh it. Yeah. But if you feel you need more time with it anyway, then obviously you can decide to just yeah. either continue it or. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, we did. We do really want this ahead of time so that we can, because uh, in the past we've, uh, and uh, I'll, I'd, I'd reference uh, one of the other projects we had where we missed a couple of things because we tried to rush through it, and uh, we had to go back. Um. Um. So anyway, we'll take a look at what you what, what you, we'll take a look at what he's got, and we'll decide if we want to move along with it. Okay. So in the meantime, um, minutes. Did we? I, do I have more than one set of minutes? I don't know if I saw more than one set of minutes in the file there. No, sorry. Uh, there's only one set. That's what I thought. So it's which one is it? Is, is it the August one? Um. August seventeenth, yes. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say I can go back and look. So yeah. All right, um, Ryan, if you would make a motion for us for the minutes of August seventeenth, please. Do you have motions? Can you see them? Yes, Mr. Pierce, we move to approve the minutes dated August seventeenth, two thousand twenty-one. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any uh, changes, corrections, or omissions? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. I, I, I'm sorry, hang on a minute. I have to real roll call this. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, you do actually because of the Zoom. Okay. Okay, Jeremiah. Um, I wasn't there, so I don't know if I should recuse myself from voting well, on for the generally the uh, the way we look at that is if you've read the minute, you know, you were there before, and if you've read the minutes, then you then you have an option. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I looked through it. I, I read through okay. it, so I okay. I okay, and then Ryan. I and then Dave. Aye. And then I am an aye as well. So that's four in favor, no opposed. Uh, Chris is absent from us tonight. And um, okay. Um, then let's do 35 Cedar Street, the extension of the subdivision approval. You want to give us a, I, I read the pay, I read the thing on it. Do you want to give a little background, Danielle? 
Oh, uh, sure. So uh, we were contacted by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brogan um, uh, to let us know that they would be needing more time to complete the subdivision. Um, they, they are ready to start, um, but they're certainly not going to be finished by their October 2nd deadline um, that they had last time. So, um, <clears throat> or, sorry, that they were given when they last extended the project. Um, I'm in the process of setting up a pre-construction meeting with uh, Dave Giangrande so we can um, get them going. But in the meantime, they felt that they would need more time and this would be their last possible meeting to request it. Um, one thing I, I think in the materials, I don't think they told us how much time they thought they needed. <laughs> so. Um, Can we just do it like a year or is that, year. that too much? I think that would be fine. I think a year is probably good because, you know, within that, that should be able to, well, that also gives them an opportunity if they need to come back. Um, right, but it would right. also um, give us uh, an opportunity to um, find out what's held them up too, because we don't, you know, we only have a two year window, right? So, or three years. We window. did, yes, originally, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, um, before we extend it any further than that, we'd want to know what the, what the situation is. And one of the reasons is because the costs change a lot. And, and they, as a matter of fact, they have now, and they may lose their ability to actually do the, uh, to perform, to actually do the sub, subdivision. We don't want that to happen. So uh, we've had them fail before and had to pick them up and finish them ourselves. So uh, it's in our best interest to make sure that their best interest to look after as well. Okay, so um, do we just have a motion for the extension? Is that, or do we need to deal with any of it? I don't think there are any other issues that need to be dealt with. I think we can make the motion for the extension. <clears throat> we left the date blank, um, but we can make that date. Um, let me see. It could be October 2nd, um, 2nd, 2022. Yeah, I think that would be fine. Okay. I apologize. I, I don't have the motions, and the link isn't working to the meeting materials here. Oh. Do you want me to? I could Why don't you just paraphrase one and then Ryan can so move. Oh, sure. Um, I move that the CPC um, uh, vote to e extend completion uh, for the, the completion deadline for the uh, definitive subdivision at 35 Cedar Street until October 2nd, 2022. So move. Okay, do I have a second? I have a second by Dave Rudlaw. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta I keep forgetting the roll call. Jeremiah. Hi. <laughs> okay, Ryan. Hi. And David. Hi. And I am I also. So that's four in favor, no opposed. Um so that's uh so so that we'll give them that that year. And if there's any issues that come across in the meantime, we'll figure that out uh as we go along. Did were they gonna come tonight and talk? Or you don't know. You know, I, I had assumed so, but I guess that was uh, an incorrect assumption. <laughs> yeah, well, they would have had to come gonna... this way, so uh, they would have had to Zoom. So they, they did they know we were Zoom tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I did provide the Zoom link and the timing and the agenda and everything. Okay. Because I, you know, hate to see them wandering around town hall right now waiting for the door to open, you know? Oh, no, no, no. I definitely sent a, a, an email and then a reminder that it would be virtual. With the link. Good, good. Good. Um, so um, we um, we did not have a fun meeting, a town meeting at uh, at the board of selectmen at the select board's meeting last night. It was it was fun for a little while, but then it got to be not fun. <laughs> I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to mention that I, um, Kevin and I spoke this morning um, from Habitat, and um, I had mentioned that we were going to be doing a little update tonight. So that's, um, he's on the call tonight, and I just wanted to point that out. I didn't want to. Yep, yep. I just no, wanted I'm to. Sorry. Go. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. um, hi, Kevin. So, you, you know, we, just to preface the whole thing, you know, we, we put a lot of time to this in the beginning, and in 2008, we passed the Affordable Housing Overlay District by so that we could do this, and the board of selectmen was fully involved, and they and they uh, and they supported it and endorsed it. So, um, so we were a little surprised last night when they seemed to back away from from the uh, from letting us uh, move these pieces of property along for a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, and and uh, it finally came down to a suggestion by by Mr. O'Leary that. Uh, we, well, there was a lot of a lot of talk about wetlands and 
and impacts from wetlands and so forth and so on. So, but it finally boiled down to Mr. O'Leary making the suggestion that, that the town flag all the wetlands and that, um, and that, uh, and, and that then we would then have more information on which to decide uh, what, what could be done with these pieces of property, which really doesn't, flagging of the wetlands without any kind of engineering, it doesn't really give you any idea whatsoever what you can do. I mean, the soil testing would have to be, I mean, there's any number of things generally done by the developer in the process of, of developing a piece of property. And all we wanted was the okay to put it out for an RFP so that we could see what, what we would get for um, input. And two of the projects, so St. Teresa's and Lowell Road, were, I mean, I mean in um, Oakdale Road were, um, you know, were you know, pretty straightforward. They're gonna be single family home or maybe two at the most at, at, at a, you know, and, and um, um, the 57 Havel Street, cause it's a much larger piece, piece was the biggest bone of contention because it had the possibility to sustain more than just a couple of, you know, more than a two family. It might be four or five or even, I think eight was the largest number we, that, that, that we have in the bylaw or in the overlay. So they, um, um, they really balked at that. They didn't want, but I don't understand why, you know, I mean, they told us to come back to the select board and with a proposal to flag all the wetlands and they'll give us the money to do it, essentially is what they said. I don't understand that. I mean, it's not something that's normally done. I mean, normally what happens is you put, you, you get permission to release the property and you and you put it out for an RFP and, and uh, with some very clear conditions in it. And uh, and then you see what comes back and you bring that to the board, to the city board and to the town meeting and you get a vote and then you pass the property off. I mean, that's pretty much the procedure. So I don't understand why we are where we are, but in the end, they voted to pass over all three of those articles at town meeting. That's what they're going to do. They're going to recommend to pass over all three of them. And with the suggestion that the town flagged the wetlands. I mean, this could have easily been solved or, or accomplished by, by putting in the RFP that the town will choose, but they were afraid there would be collusion in the, for some reason in the flagging of the wetlands. So, um, I mean, that could easily have been solved by having the, uh, in the RFP, the town choose the, the, the contractor who would do the flagging so that there would be no outside influence, if you will, which is what they appeared to be concerned about. Um, so, so we're back to square one with this. Now, if you remember, we voted to recommend all three of those at town meeting, and that stands. That's in the, that's in the town warrant that we voted to recommend all three of them. And so my intention at this point is to continue along that line to recommend um, all three of them, one at a time, and let them recommend passing over. And then I'll try to defend our position on, uh, on not passing over them and see what happens. Any help would be, would be <laughs> appreciated. <laughs> Kevin, I don't know if you're gonna, would, gonna, could be there and support this. I mean, they were, they were concerned about, you know, what was gonna happen. I mean, the, and, I mean, there was a lot of, input from the neighborhoods and they and they seem to basically buckle under that so yeah it was challenging for me not to weigh in last night but i don't know what assurances or promises i can make since we're not the designated developer that's I mean, right so I, I i can show how habitat has done this with other towns um the house we're building in concord right now the duplex we're building in concord right now concord gave us four pages of conditions we had to meet in order to get the building permit, drainage, all kinds of things. So had we not met those, we wouldn't be building right now. We wouldn't have gotten the permit. So it's very typical for, and just because you issue an RFP doesn't mean you have to say yes to somebody. Right. So you put the conditions in the RFP. Um, we respond with, you know, part of the problem last night is they're saying, well, what's the project? We don't know what we're voting on. Um, you can't know until we put the RFP can't know until we put I don't in know what RFP. they didn't get about that. I, I can't do, I don't think any developer can do a project proposal when the property is not even available. Right. Um, and I certainly could assure them, 
based on what we've done with other towns. I mean, as a nonprofit, we have no financial motive to um, monkey with, with any of the wetlands assessment or anything else. In fact, I was telling Danielle today, Carlisle handed us two pieces of property and said, do whatever you want with them. And after we did our wetlands assessment, we said, we can't do anything with them. That we'll, we won't be able to get around the wetlands. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just the way we operate. But like I said, as tempting as I was, I was so close so many times to jumping in, I kept thinking, but what promises or assurances can I make? Because the response is, we don't know that you're going to be the developer. Mm -hmm. But the way it is typically done is you issue the RFP with your conditions and your concerns. Uh, developers, Habitat included, respond. If none of the proposals are acceptable or you don't feel that it's going to you know, meet neighborhood needs or town needs, then you don't have to say yes to anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and even once an RFP is done, like in Conquer, then you say, okay, but we're going to give it to you. But now here are 19 other, I think in Conquer, it was like 30 other hurdles you'll have to meet um, in order to get your building permit, which is not untypical. It felt like nobody trusted the town to do the right thing. It's like, we're <laughs> not going to vote unless we know exactly what the proposal is, but you can't get the proposal unless there's an RFP. Well, I had the feeling that they were not really listening to us and they really didn't, uh, they didn't have any interest. And then, and then in the end, when they said that the St. Teresa's property might be a good place for a, a lift station for the sewer, that property is so high up. Um, I mean, it's much higher up than the street so there's, you know, you, you don't put a lift station on the highest piece of land, you put it on the lowest piece of land so that you can gravity to it and then pump, pump up to the, uh, to the collection site. So, so that, that really, that, that, piece, that piece of property is never going to be a pump station location. So um, it's, it's um, I began to realize after a while, similar to you, Kevin, that they just weren't, that, that they were just not, they were just buckling up. They were not going to be in favor of this at all. And so I just finally gave up talking to them because I think I'd rather talk to the townspeople at town meeting and tell them the story and let them choose. You know, one of, one of the white neighbors made an excellent point. It's, and he was the only one who said, listen, we can either work with an organization to put in affordable housing that we control and we dictate, or yeah. eventually there's going to be an unfriendly 40B and you're going to get what you get. Yep. Really. So, I mean, that's, that's the stick, you know, but we'll see if that stick is big enough. I mean, uh, we I don't do it with the carrot approach, but we, we habitat in particular, we don't do any house until we work with the neighbors, the community and the town. And even yeah. if we meet all the town requirements, we get neighborhood input. Um, yeah. And I think I'd mentioned once before, I, I defy anyone to go into a neighborhood where there's a habitat home and pick out the habitat home. I mean, it's just, it's just. Right. Right. Well, so, so for everybody's edification that I, I just, I'm going to pursue it anyway. I'm at a town meeting. I'm going to try to see if I can sell the concept to the town, to the people of the town. And see if they're willing to uh, to give us a, to to, uh, to release the properties so that we can do RFPs so that we can see what can be done. Yeah, and okay. it's not a, if you do that. I mean, I think what's really important to explain to them just because you issue an RFP doesn't mean there's going to be a project. It means right. you're going to solicit proposals for a project. Right, right. And we have, and we can put conditions in the RFP when we do to limit the number of houses or the number of dwellings than any one piece of property. So it's not as if we're going to, uh, that you're going to automatically jam eight units down somebody's throat. You know, I mean, that's just not how it is. And, and two of these properties are basically good candidates for a single family or at the most a duplex. And the other one could have a little more on it. But, uh, but again, if, if we think that that's a problem, we could, uh, I know that Habitat would just, would take it and put one house on it and be happy. We uh, would, we would. Yeah, I, I, I mean, know you would. So, so and, and, uh, we, and I know they were concerned about duplex because I'm sure they have you know a typical duplex in mind. The one we're doing in Concord right now looks like a ranch. Yeah. So the upper floor is the you know one unit, and the lower floor, which is below grade, is is another unit. You, you drive by and it looks like a typical Concord ranch. 
Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the, if anybody has any questions about last night, it was, uh, we went in there thinking that this was going to be a no brainer and we got beat up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway. I um, wanted to mention one other comment that I got today. Um, I had a, a resident on here at Heritage Way call me and um, just to let us know that of her opposition, you know, because of the wetlands and um, she wanted it to be an appropriate size to the neighborhood. Um, the suggestion that she made, which I think is very similar to what others suggested at the select board meeting is that they want the exact specifications. They want building plans and everything done before we could, the town could decide whether to allow the select board to convey it. Um, I think that's just a really high hurdle. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to do that. And I think, well, you, you know. know they, what would have to happen here is the town, the, the, the select board would have to, would have to authorize us to put out an RFP on it, knowing that if we do that, at some point they're going to have to release the property or else there's no sense to the RFP. I mean, so that begs the question, then why, you know, why are we put, why, why put the cart before the horse? Let's get it done. Right. Let's do it in the right order. So I'm not sure that they're... They have to authorize the RFP anyway. Right. Oh, I know that. Right. But so, I mean, will also, they will they authorize an RFP before there's a release of the property? Well, I think that was something that, so that's something that we talked about a lot for Carpenter Drive, and that's actually our plan for Carpenter Drive. I don't know if we'll get any proposals um, because people would be responding to a property that may or may not end up being available. Um, but we figured that was the only way to show town meeting exactly what would be built here. I mean, I think that might make sense for a really large project, but for these really small projects, I don't know if we're really going to be able to do that. I mean, it was something that I had suggested as a possibility. And I think Kevin, you and I had talked about that a couple of days ago. And I, maybe I misunderstood. I had thought of the idea that, you know, if we had put out an RFP, um, at least for 57 Haverhill Street and had a response, then that could be used as, you know, the basis of, okay, well, now we can have the town meeting vote because this is exactly what's going to go here. And this is the designated developer if, you know, of course, our habitat were chosen. Um, but it sounds like that's probably not a great option. Um, and maybe that's not really something that should be floated as a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this kind of, uh, you know, um, it's kind of, uh, it was a bit unexpected that we would get put in this position. So um, I don't know what the uh, final result will be here, but. But I mean, all, all we can do is go to town meeting and plead our case and, and see what happens. Because while the, the select board can recommend anything that they want, but, it, the, but the people vote. And the select board has five votes. The rest of the town has all the rest of them. <laughs> so I mean, Kevin, we'll just do the best we can. No, I, I appreciate that. I, I, told Danny, I, I felt bad for both of you. And it felt like yeah, you were right. getting beat up and it was yeah. completely <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I've been on this board a long time and, and I and every single subdivision, except for one, we, we had one subdivision that came in that there was absolutely zero opposition to. And the guy that built it um, spent a good amount of time making appointments, went to every single neighboring house, looked at their house, you know, looked, looked at their basements to make sure there were no cracks in the foundation. I mean, he put a lot of work in to that. And then when he brought it before us, the neighbors came in and supported him. And that was the easiest subdivision approval we ever did. So if you put the work in, you know, it, it does, it, it can work, I guess, so. But but generally, uh, you know, generally, you know, people don't want to have a piece of land that they um, that that's sitting there have you know be built on if they feel like it it jeopardizes, you know, the serenity of the neighborhood or or, or encroaches on their privacy or something. So uh, so and the point that I you know that to, to be made would be if the town just said okay listen we're just going to sell these pieces of property, which they could do that they could just sell the pieces of property due to to somebody. Mm -hmm. Even if they sell sold to a person, that person could then go build a house on it by right, as long as they met all the conditions for building a house. 
and, and no, and, they, and the and the neighbors couldn't stop them. I mean, you know, because they would have the right to do it. They buy it as a house lot; they could build it. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm just I'm uh, that's why I was very surprised that we went we've gone to we put a lot of work into this uh, you know affordable housing overlay district and 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 to have this not work was um, a bit of a surprise. I, I was very disappointed with the St. Teresa property. That one is so perfect for development. I mean, yeah. we yeah. could literally start the day after a building permit was issued. And yeah. I kept thinking for the neighbors when they were talking about the pumping station, it's like, would you rather have a nice residential house there in your backyard or a pump? Oh, you want station? a sewage pump there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I might bring that up. <laughs> I think um, we had assumed that the um, having the zoning in place already, which it has been in place all these years, that that was enough. I, I guess clearly that wasn't enough, um, which is why I focused so much for the presentation on what the zoning allows, not what was right. definitely going to be good there because we didn't have a we don't, have, we don't have an actual we have to, developer yet. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't, we, don't, we haven't put an RFP out. So we don't know what, what they'll offer, what anybody will offer. We have no, you know, we don't really know. Until we get a chance to, until we get to the point where the, the property is released and we can put out an RFP on it, I don't know how else we can move forward on it. Mm -hmm. So it looks like if this is going to be the answer to our affordable housing uh, initiative, then it looks like we're never going to get any affordable housing. I, I did want to ask one question just about this as we approach town meeting. Um, on the neighborhood meeting call last week, um, someone asked if we could do a site visit and a couple of people echoed that. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. I talked to the town engineer. He would be happy to you know, join me. Um, we talked about possibly you know, next Thursday morning is a time that we both could do um, and just see each of the three properties. I don't know. I mean, a site walk, you're not supposed to have deliberation. You're not supposed to take comments. It's not a posted um, meeting. Right. So I, I, I have concerns. I also have concerns about the fact that it was brought up at that meeting. And um, I said I would look into it, but I really don't have a good way to communicate to the neighborhood if we don't do it. I, I don't know. I just wanted to pose that question. How does everyone feel about that? What do you guys think? I mean, I mean, I understand what what Danielle's saying that we you know if we maybe only one of us would go to the site walk at a time is that what you're saying is no and I guess I'm not concerned about um, open meeting law stuff from from all of you because I think all of you know how to show up to a site visit and not deliberate I think the problem would be people will show up and say oh you did you have to consider this and you have to consider that and they start pointing out features and that's. I guess I'm a little concerned. I don't know. I guess it's not necessarily a problem, but I want to be clear that that's not. It's not a posted meeting where we're there to chat to take their because that's not a great format to take their feedback. Yeah. People want to see it. They they're welcome to but see. We're it. also, just, but but we're also not the, the develop. I mean, the town. We're not the developers. We're not a developer. So we're going to this site walk as a and trying to act out like a developer, which is not what we should be doing. I mean, no. This is right. this is why we put out an RFP and get a professional developer to give us. An, an analysis of what they would do. I mean, this, the mm -hmm. site walk would be something that I would think would be just be done um, so that they can see what's there and realize that it'll all be taken care of or whatever. So I'm not sure who, who would, uh, I, I don't know, is that something that you would do, Danielle, in order to keep the, the uh, possibility of uh, contamination of the situation? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, I would be happy to go with the town engineer. I think, you know, the purpose would yeah. be, okay, here's 57 Haverhill Street. This is the upland part of it. You enter the site. This is the low flat, you know, this is just the flat area. The, yeah, no, yeah. the wetlands don't begin yet. This is the area we're hoping to focus for the development. I, I don't know how much we can show people. I'm not going to start walking the wetlands. I think that that's, that's very difficult to do and we have no interest in developing that part. I think people ask for that because they want to make sure we know there are wetlands. I mean, certainly do know. I just... I'm just not sure how to handle that situation because I'm not entirely sure what people would want to get from it. And I don't know what we could really offer them. Um, I'm happy to do it if it's-, if it's Well, I mean, last night, last night, Steve O'Leary seemed to indicate that, that us, that, that the town going out and identifying and flagging the wetlands would, um, 
um, would solve the whole problem. I, 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 and I just don't see how that is because, you know, it, you know, whoever flags them is going to flag them the same. You know, I, as when they, when I spoke to them I last night, I said, it's got to be a professional botanist. It's got to be somebody that with credentials, it's not going to be, you know, somebody just walking around putting flags out. So, um, um, the only, and again, they, they offered to give us the money to, to hire somebody to do that. So, I mean, you have, but that, that means we've got to go out and get quotes and then, you know, so forth. There's a whole process that you have to go through with the town in order to hire somebody to do that. Right, Danielle? I mean, we, and, you know, I don't know that we can get, if it's something we can get BCI to, I mean, I mean. We could just select someone and we could certainly ask DCI to do it. We asked them to, we hired them to do it for Carpenter Drive. Um, the problem is I, I don't know how quickly we'd be able to get money to do that. Uh, I'm certainly not in time for this yeah. town meeting. I don't know what the process is to ask for money for that outside of, Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, and I can ask. I don't, I've just, we've never asked for money in the middle of a cycle like this. But. Yeah, Ryan. I apologize. I didn't make the, the meeting last night, but I'm confused why would we be doing any preemptive wetland delineation when yeah, well, so any I. developer would have to do it themselves as part of the development process. Okay, well, the answer to that, Ryan, is that they, they, there's somebody brought up the fact that the developer might hire somebody who would be friendly to them and, 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 and mark the wetlands in such a way as to help the developer get more out of it or, or something like that, you know? Well, I guess that's the risk with any piece of property in the entire town, isn't it? Well, I, well, well, you know, my answer was, you know, that we, you know, you could just put the uh, the town could choose whoever does the flagging, and put it in the RFP, and then you know the developer would pay for it. That way, the town doesn't have to pay for it. I don't understand how we got to this point. Yeah, or we could just dismiss that concern because it's a registered environmental engineer who's not going to be like, no, who's going to risk their license? To try yeah. to get a developer to be able to put another unit on a piece of property, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, it's, it's such a simple, it's such a simple solution too that it's 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 not a, it's right. no brainer. So, so I think, so, I mean, in my mind, the focus here should be on dismissing the idea that the town would ever like. Why would we waste ta taxpayer money doing the developer's job unless we're going to somehow then stipulate that the town gets reimbursed for those costs if a developer buys it? But otherwise, we're just wasting taxpayer money on on private developer costs, right? I and mean, we're doing yeah, well, there's, a, there's a number of problems too. So so you you so we go through this whole thing and they go out and they flag the wetlands, and then we and then we try to go through the process through a couple of town meetings, and by the time we get the property released, the flags are all gone, fallen off, <laughs> and, you know. I mean, and then I got to all be done again. <laughs> you know, right. it just it makes no sense. So I, I just think that we're. Um, I, I, I was just, a, we've, I think. Our process and would right. never accept a delineation right. that was done improperly. In, right. in lieu of stipulating actual environmentals, I, I would say you're better off in the RFP stipulating that we have the right to a peer review. Well, that's know, fine. Uh, anything, I mean, if conservation anything, had a concern that there was an issue with the, the wetland study, then you'd have a right to a peer review at the developer's expense. And, right. you know, who's not going to sign off on that, right? Unless if you have due cause to have it, then you do it. And if it aligns with what you think you have for wetlands on site and you have no reason to believe there's anything nefarious going on, then you go with it. But yeah, yeah. the idea of preemptively doing it at town expense is, I mean, I think we should just would be strongly rejecting that. We've done so notion. many subdivisions in this town over the years, and the, the wetlands have been flagged, and we've had conservation go out, and, and there's been some that had to make some changes, and some that were all good. Um, but but it's been on, it's it's gotten plenty of scrutiny, and we've never really had a problem where where anybody improperly where a, a, a site plan got brought back and redone because somebody improperly flagged the wetlands. Right, right. I mean, it is a pretty subjective science, right? You know, I mean, well, actually, actually, the, if to do it properly, you don't just walk out there and hang a few flags. You got to do some digging. You got to dig up the dirt, dirt, right? And you got to dig and look for the for the uh, roots for the red maples and all that stuff. 
that you uh, that you will find, and and you go, you know you go back three or four steps at a time until it disappears, and then you know you're out of the well. So, so I mean, yeah. there, there is a there is a science to it. And there is a process, and properly yeah, but that the soil coloration is subjective, right? What one calls the edge of the wetland. But my, my point is, is it, it does vary a little bit, and but yeah. I think you're exactly right. I mean, it's it's the developer's job, not the town's. Right. Right. It's the developer's responsibility, and, and I. But we would have the op option of uh, stipulating, I think, a particular company if everybody was uncomfortable with it happening any other way. I think it's a bad precedent to set, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, for, for habitat, and I don't know how other developers would do it. As part of the RFP process, the first step we would take would be to flag the wetlands to decide if we would want to reply to the RFP. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, everybody's due having diligence. You, having you say that at, at town meeting would probably help Kevin if you, if you, you know, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to convince these, I mean, you know, we've gone through a lot of work to get to this point and now we're just going to get shot down because we're never going to, because getting the money out of uh, the board of select, the select board is, you know, it, it's a process to get funding for this and that's not going to happen quickly, quickly enough. Yes, Daniel. Yes, just in terms of like the, the strategy for, for town meeting and what is what our preference would be um, for these properties. Um, I mean, I think that if, you know, I, I just, I don't, I guess I'm asking, do we want to consider, um, you know, a motion that restricts the number of units on these properties? say it was, you know, one unit for Oakdale, one unit for, or two units each for the other two. I don't know if that's, I mean, is that an approach that we would like to take? If we were to tell the butters to, you know, 57 Haverhill Street that the maximum would be a two family house and it would be at the frontage, at the setback from Haverhill Street um, and that that would be a stipulation of the RFP. Um, and I mean, is that something that we would would want to do or is that I mean I just I'm just trying to think through a strategy that that will get us to where we want to be. Was that the well, concern I mean, too many units? I'm sorry. For 57 no Haverhill Street, yes. Um because they were concerned too many units for the neighborhood and also um were concerned because because there are wetlands and because many homes in that neighborhood have water issues and flooding, there was concern that too much development on that site would create additional water problems, flooding, et cetera, on yeah. abutting yeah. properties. Because and that's up the Heritage Way, that's the problem. That whole problem and then the wetlands are the Heritage Way. Right, yes. but we would want to develop the front by Haverhill Street. Right. But I didn't feel right. comfortable promising that it would be X number of feet from Haverhill Street and far from Heritage Way. I didn't feel comfortable saying that, knowing that, no. but I, I don't know. I mean, if we want to make that, I. I'm just trying to figure out what we can say in a motion that would put people at ease enough that it would actually pass. Well, I don't, um, I don't know. I mean, we could certainly um, tell them that we were going to put those things in, but I think to try to make a motion, I think to try to make a motion at this particular juncture, I think the the basics we need to deal with the basics here. The basics are: are they going to let us do this? Uh, can we? Because every, there's not a single piece of property we're not going to run into the same thing. Are they going to support this affordable housing bylaw or not? That's basically the answer, the question. So trying to manipulate that or trying to re re reformat that uh, that RFP and the process of getting it released. I, I don't I don't know. If that's I think that's going to muddy the waters. Possibly, though, I think for some people, like I was told today by the abutter who called, um, that she would have no problem at all with a project um, on 57 Haverhill Street if it was up to a two-family house and no more, and if it was on Haverhill Street and not in the back by the wetlands. And if other people felt that way, then possibly that would be enough to um, to address those concerns. I'm, I mean, I know it, I'm not saying that we have to do it this way, but I did check with the town council and it would be possible to limit the number of units in the motion if that was something that we chose to do. I'm not saying we have to do that, but in the interest of trying to assure people, I, I thought- I'm, I'm game to try that because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely up for that. If you want to write those, if you want to write me up a couple of motions to uh, uh, modified motions, I, I'll make them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I can, I can. I mean, I'll give that a try. 
Okay. I mean, because like, like I said, if we can even just get one house going on. So once they see, I think that if we got one house going and they see what Habitat does, or what a developer who would, who, whoever we pick who would build an affordable unit, they can see what it would, what, that it would be okay, that it would just look like a single family home, that it's fine, then the, the next one will be easier, you know? Right. We're gonna need to address the, the um, issue with the belief that St. Teresa's might be appropriate for our sewer infrastructure. And I'm not sure the best way to, because oh, that yeah, is an instant. It's got weight, it's weight. You do not put a pump station on the highest piece of property. You put it at the uh, lowest uh, piece of property. <laughs> I believe you. You can't, gravity, you can't gravity uphill. You have to gravity I believe you. Uh, but I if the perception- I people at town meeting that, then okay. they're gonna say, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And they'll wonder whose idea was it to, make, to try to make gravity go uphill? It doesn't go. <laughs> also, it could be this or a sewer pump. As we said, <laughs> it could be what it, it, this or the sewer. I mean, pump station. I mean, really. Yeah, yeah. That's that's you know. Yeah, but I think I think Evan's point was, who wants a pump? Right. What would you rather have, a single family home or a sewer pump station next door? Pick one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I, 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 you know, the, the whole thing yesterday or well, last night till almost eleven o'clock at night was surreal, I thought. I, I don't understand where they were, what, what, what they were. It's almost like there was a different reason that we weren't being told. <laughs> I, I don't know. They were making stuff up. <laughs> um, you know. what, what, what should I do about this site walk? I'm happy to go ahead and plan it um, or not. Okay, I, 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 okay, okay. I'm okay. sorry, <laughs> not to put I you on the spot. For, I know, I know, I know. That's where you that's where you wait now. But I've been thinking about that. But so, so I would say, if they want to go on a site walk, first of all, nothing's going to be flagged. So they're only they're not going to see uh, any of the limitations. They're not even going to know. They're going to say it's a wetland right here, not knowing that the wetland probably goes another ten feet or fifteen or even fifty feet. But they don't realize because they because because nobody has actually done the digging or done the actual analysis of the site. So so it's it's almost a you know, it's almost like a, an appeasement thing. So I would say, yeah, go ahead. Go with the town engineer, none of us. Just okay. the town engineer, go visit the site. You can take notes and bring them back to us. It's fine if anyone wants to come. I don't think it's an you issue so? in any way. Even if all of you wanted to come, it's still not a posted meeting. Um, but well, I mean, I, I'm probably be the, I'm in town all the time yeah. anyway, so it'd probably be easier for me to go unless somebody else would like to go. Um, so I would go if you want. I sure. I think having you there would be great if you have the time. It was going to be. Um, I was going to suggest we started. Nobody has the time these days. <laughs> What's that? But you make the time. Nobody has the time. You make the time, right? I understand. So. <laughs> like eight forty-five um, to start the first one on Haverhill Street, yeah. and then yeah. forty-five minutes for that one, and then half an hour each for Oakdale and then St. Teresa. Yeah. So yeah. I can. Okay. You know. Yeah. All right. Thank that, you. That, that, that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, and anybody else, you know, make sure everybody knows when there's anybody else that wants to go. Don't think you're not welcome. You are. But, you know, it'd be a little tough to get there from South Carolina and a little. <laughs> 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 the drive to up and back will probably eat up most of your day. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, but so anybody else that want to go would be would be fine. And we'll just. It. it, it it will give us, a, you know, it'll it'll give us one more thing that got done. You know, you know, you asked for this, we did it. What else, what else? And what did you see? Did you see anything different than what we told you? You know, and yes, we now have all that quote information to work with. So, so let's do it. Was there more than one person that thought this was a good idea? The site walk. Oh, the site walk. Um, one person suggested it. It was echoed by a couple. It was hard for me to tell how many people wanted it. Um, Maureen was there from the transcript and she suggested she would be happy to get help get the word out about it if we decided to do it. Um, yeah. So I will let her know tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Good, okay. Just a, a, a parting 
thought for what it's worth. I, I think the things that really need to be clear, so A, there are concerns about the wetlands. <laughs> People can't build on wetlands, period. There are state laws, there are federal laws, there are town laws. Um, they get flagged one way or the other and no developer in their right mind puts something in a wetland because it's not gonna stay. You know, two, okay, part of the wetlands issue was the drainage issue. That will should be part of the RFP. There are wetlands on the land. How are you going to handle? And there are butters. How are you going to handle drainage? You know, three, they want to know what the project is. That's why you release the property and have an RFP. Then you will get to see what the projects are. If none of them are acceptable, nothing happens. You're not obligated to award an RFP. If one is more or less acceptable, but you want it tweaked, then it gets tweaked. Like I said, Concord gave us seven pages of conditions they wanted us to meet. No problem. It, it took a year for us to meet them all, but we met them all. Um, you guys are the, you know, in the driver's seat. And it just felt like a lot of the uh, neighbors and abutters were like, uh, once the property is released, we have no control whatsoever, and and, and it's, it's obviously not the case. Right. So, several people have said that to me, and I have tried to explain that that's not how it works. But, well, I did last night too. I said that's not how it works. It'll have to come back to town meeting. It'll have to come back to the select board. If it were to change. Yeah. Yeah. The select board ultimately has full control over that RFP. If they don't like the RFP, doesn't go out. And if they don't like who responds, doesn't get conveyed. So, you know. right. Well, that's what I told. That's what I said last night. They, 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 it's like they didn't hear it. So, and that's that's frankly, from Habitat's perspective, that's my only concern. Warren, you indicated it felt like there was some underlying reason they weren't expressing. So, my ultimate fear is even if the property is released and there's an RFP, if they don't want the property developed it's just not going to happen. That's a risk. It yeah. is. Now we get a lot of our engineering services and architectural services donated. So it, it's certainly a risk, you know, I'm willing to take because we don't have to put up tens of thousands of dollars to put together a plan and a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'll, I'll certainly have in the back of my mind that there's a hurdle we're not going to get over, and I don't know what that hurdle is. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll get a chance to find out. <laughs> Onward and upward. Don't give up. <laughs> just see what happens. So we'll go to town meeting, and we'll just do uh, the best we can to uh, convince people that this is something that... Um, um, this is something that needs to be, uh, that we've been working on for a long time, and this is something we'd like to see done. So that's that. All right, so we're actually past our eight o'clock for our 271 Main Street. So we, um, if we're all set with this, anybody have any questions or any more comments on this? You know, I guess we'll just do some motions and we'll try that tack and see what happens. See if that by, limiting the number of units on each one of these properties, we can get them to go a little further along. And um, we'll do the site walk before that so we can stand up in front and say, we did a site walk with people they've seen, they've showed us everything they know. We've gathered as much information as we can without doing an RFP. That's that. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we might as well just move, let's move on here. So, uh, any, like I said, any, any questions or comment? Why do we have you twice, David? <laughs> this is my worst nightmare. You're, <laughs> only moving, you're only moving in one, the other one you're I, not moving. I know, it's, uh, I, I don't know, I can't speak to the other one, but I, I've been kicked off twice, but it's probably my hotel wireless, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I'm angry Dave. That is, that is actually yeah. pretty yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, just 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 slow down. If we get four or five or six of you, this is gonna be really difficult. <laughs> I can only see I can only see one. Oh does he so. get to vote twice? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. 
that'll be problematic. <laughs> and as you move on to other business, I just want to thank you all for your time and, and, and your efforts. Uh, it, it's people like you that, that help make these projects possible. So thank you. Thank yeah, you. My church, by the way, Kevin, my church uh, sends kids every year down to work at Habitat for Humanity down in the South Carolina and a couple of different places where they go and they, they spend a week working for Habitat for Humanity building homes for people. So yeah, our Bill Ricker, our Bill Ricker project and uh, Concord project, church groups just nonstop. Yep. Well, we did. We also sent them up to Lawrence on a project up in Lawrence too. So, thank you. Yep. Yep. Bye. Well, I mean, we, we're a believer in the process. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yep. Okay. Bye. All right. Two seventy one Main Street. Um. Um. We have uh, we had a list of uh, let me just go back to that real quick. And, uh, Danielle, I was you, able just, you loaded those three docs. Yes. Is that is that what you received? Yes. Okay. Um, I didn't have time to really open them and title them, um, but the three are there. So the only question, and this is more, and it's, I know Warren might not be able to look at them, but there's, um, you know, one is the front. Um, sign showing the you know the difference of the pylon sign for the main plaza at showing their new logo in there and that's fine and then the other two are kind of identical except except they just have different sign sizes it goes from you know a 30 a 32 inch letter to a 30 inch letter and but overall the same it shows the same you know facade so i'm not sure if they're just trying to showed two different options there, but that's just so everyone, and especially Warren, the other two are just drawings of the facade of, of just the, of the, the one, you know, the retail location, not the plaza. There's no plaza drawing in there. No one if to that's show what they said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the elevation profile in context, the whole plaza noting that noting what will be removed as well as what will be added, cables, signage, et cetera. So that's one of the things we asked for, was the whole plaza to see how it all uh, laid out. And it sounds like we did not we did not get that. The, the entire plaza should be, this has been with Sabo again. Um, the entire plaza is one of the PDFs that we, we sent over. We don't how many did you send over? How many PDFs? It was a, a single PDF with three sheets, um, one showing our um, previous proposal, one showing our proposal based off of your recommendations and lowering the facade, and then one with a, a close-up and a, a very basic demo plan or demo elevation. Yeah, that's not that's not how it you know is if you click on them. Uh, there's there's two different sheets, and then there's obviously the front um, pylon sign one, but there's two different sheets and uh, I, have three different, I have three different um, yeah there's layers. three on the share file. I just meant there's right. two like of the front facade um, and the other ones of a pylon sign I believe unless I'm wrong right there were three that were sent over um, from our sign vendor and then there was one with three sheets in it that was sent from us oh okay well that could be something else that's six sheets you're talking about then Total. Yeah, total six. Okay, it yeah, we're, we just have three. three. We have three, and they could be just, they appear to be kind of sign ones, so they could be from the, the one you're referencing for sign company. I haven't seen the three other ones. Yeah, the pylons, I got the sign. It looks like 3A and 3C are the same, are the same, too. Yeah, they kind of are, Brian, if you notice, there's just a little difference in lettering. Um, oh, okay. There's, there's just a small delta of the, the, uh, the width of the entire sign is 31 feet in one of them, 29 in the other, and the height of the, the large lettering is 32 versus 30. So they show you a 32 and a 30. Okay, thank you. So I still don't see, so I, yeah, I've looked at all three of them. I still don't see the whole plaza um, picture. I only have three files here in my yep. permit eyes. Um, also, I just went back to check and I, I only see proposal B elevation, proposal A elevation and monument sign. I, I 
Don't see anything yep. else. Yeah, that's the three you sent. I have all three of them. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was too large or something. You know that it, that was sent over at the time. I don't know. Um, I'll I'll drop in the other three. Okay. I'm, I apologize for the complications. That's okay. Um, Ben, if you're able to, are they of a size where you can just email it to me? It'll be faster for me to get it into their share file. If not, that's fine. I can. I did send you an email with, I believe, all oh, six sheets. It case. didn't come through. It must be too big. Okay. I'm refreshing, but I'm I'm not seeing it. Um, oh, here's the link. Oh. Okay, I just clicked just on the, the link. Oh, I see. Okay, this is a. I didn't realize this was a download. Ah, uh, it's in WeTransfer and it zipped. Okay. I see four files now. Well, one, two, three, four, and then other images. Okay, so there's. Is it like 10 files in here? Uh, I, I, I included some photos um, of ah. the site at night because of the, the, the brightness was an issue in the previous um, meeting. All right, I'm gonna see if I, I didn't I can wanna copy. upload those to the website. Sure. Um, I'm gonna try to copy these into the share file. It might just take me a few minutes. I just uploaded all three sheets separately uh, on Hermit Eyes. Okay. Um, while these are uploading, my daughter just woke up. So I'm going to go see if I can uh, okay. hush her back to sleep real quick. Okay. Go ahead, Jeremiah. I'll say just you know one comment while well, maybe people are it you, you did do I think what we asked and, and Ryan had brought up I you know you've lowered things down to <clears throat> the eve the existing eve and um, with the gable and its returns so I think it I think it looks better that way mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure maybe you can explain the difference in the lettering um, why there's you know one one that's 32 one that's 30 is that uh, is there a reason for that reason sure sure um our we we had asked our sign vendor to propose uh provide uh two options one with our previous proposal and one with our new proposal with the small signage and uh when they sent it over today um they misunderstood our request and sent you the new elevation with two different size signs instead of two elevations with a different size sign for each of them so the 30 inch lettering is what, uh, and you'll see when we upload our, um, when, when you see the, the full sized elevations, uh, what we mean. So the new, so the new, um, or, or the current, currently, current uh, um, view that you're gonna provide us with, we'll have the 30 inch sign with it drop down into the uh, lower area there. Correct. Okay, so, okay. Hey, um, I'm but, sorry, this is Joe from Pet Supplies Plus. Um, I just wanted to correct that. That's not correct. Um, uh, the, the We would prefer, of course, we're going to do whatever code, code um, you know, dictates to us. But um, from our understanding, a 32-inch sign um, is allowed. And what we just asked our sign vendor to do is when the, the new facade um, was proposed, to, to see if we could still maintain the 32 inch sign, if it still was gonna look proportional with the, with the existing facade. Um, and then we also had them do a 30. Um, but looking at both of them, it still looks like the 32 works within the overall um, proportions of the building facade. So we would still prefer to, to go with the co-compliant sign we just had them do another one just in case um, so we could take a look at it from a proportional standpoint. Okay, I understand that. Um, but it was a little confusing. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> I'm just looking what, oh, sorry, go ahead, Daniel. No, I'm just looking through the, all the files and I just wanna make sure I actually put everything into the share file. 
I'm looking, am I looking for an elevation drawing that shows the whole plaza with the new view? I'm just, I'm just not finding it. Yes. Um, it, there should be three sheets, each with an elevation drawing at, uh, at the bottom. At the larger scale, we can make it and fit it on the sheet um, with their enlarged um, counterparts on each sheet. In other words, you have three sheets showing the whole, uh, you, the whole um, plaza? Uh, correct. So you, have which file three, is that? so you have to take the three sheets and line them up to see the whole plaza, is that it? Uh, each sheet shows, uh, the first sheet Second. will show our previous proposal, the second sheet will okay. show our recommended proposal, and the third sheet shows enlarged elevations of our, um, of just our frontage. Uh, okay. With uh, the last meeting, you asked for a simple, you wanted to know what was being demolished in replace of it, so we included some existing elevations as well. Okay, so the second sheet shows the whole plaza? They all do. They all have the whole plaza. Oh, entire on. plaza in there? Okay. Is everyone else seeing this? I just, when I open the files, I don't know if I'm opening the same thing again and again, but I'm just not seeing it. Um, ben, are you um, able to screen share? Uh, I'm not. Okay, um, okay you know, um, I, I, I'm beginning to think that we really, we're not going to really get a chance to, we're going to spend a lot of time here and we're not going to end up, um, I think we need to uh, get a chance to, I mean, th that's why you need to submit this stuff early. Submitting it late like this can make it very difficult, especially in this particular situation where we have to zoom everything, where we can't have you sit in front of us and, and, uh, and, and show us pictures. And so rather than put Danielle through all this while she tries to get this stuff in, if you can get it to her and we can, she can get it to us and then we can all look it all over and ask our questions. And then I think we'll be in better position to vote at the next meeting on it because we really needed to have it earlier than this. This last minute stuff never has never worked. And, um, and in many cases, we've refused even to consider stuff that came in last minute. So we, we, tried, to, we tried to give you a break here to see if we could get it in, but this is getting to be a bit much. Uh, Ryan, I'm- We got it too. Go ahead. No, I was just apologizing to Ryan, who I realized asked if I could email him the files and I'm sorry, I'm just saying that now, but yes, I will. Sorry. Thank you. Are the other elevation ones you're talking about just all the photos? Because I, I, I noticed, Danielle, you have all the photos, or is that taken by somebody else? They, those were added. So there's all these, there's six new JPEGs that are taken of the facade. I just added, one? yeah, I just added, I think, like six photos, and there were yeah. four PDFs. Yeah. I still just don't see the elevation drawing of the whole plaza, and I don't know if I'm just missing it, but I'm just not. I'm the just name, able to open it. The name of the file is 2021.09.21 .09 um, underscore FA2157 proposed elevations. Yeah, that one was I don't see any of that. I don't see any of that on my. All I have is JPEG uh, image numbers, JPEG numbers. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Is there a photo of the front of Stop and Shop and, and out of all these photos? Yes. Not the photo, oh, excuse yeah. me. In the elevation there is. Okay. Yeah. Is it who who provided the photos? Uh, that would be Sean, who was present at the last meeting. Uh, oh, okay. took some photos of the plaza and uh, on his way home. I'm just trying to understand a little bit, um, you know, to help you along a little bit. Your 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 textures, if you will, and your on your gable, it, it shows a, you know the hatch is a some sort of texture, versus you know the rest of the plaza has that the vinyl siding clapboard kind of below that eave, um, in, in into the sign field. But I'm just curious. So what what material are you putting in there or proposing to put in there for the um... Are, are you looking at the sign? Yeah, vendors? so uh, yeah, just yeah, that one. And, and it, again, that's all I have to go on. So I apologize if there's a you know, more of an architectural that provides that detail. So you can just maybe speak to it because it sounds like we're not we don't have enough documentation. But if, I'm just curious 
um, in closing, I guess <laughs> what we can cover right now would be just what, what do you want to do for materials there? Uh, we're just proposing a white trim to match what's there and an EPIS to match the cream colors of the other anchor facades in the plaza. Okay, so it's EPIS, and then it'll just yeah. transition back to the uh, the vinyl, the kind of uh, off-white uh, vinyl siding. Yeah, and these would have been uploaded, but I, I just, uh, I guess, incorrectly assumed that um, the the files that we uploaded for the building permit would be available to all of you as well. well. I received them. No, I mean, I, I received them when you sent them to me, which was right before our meeting. Um, so I was opening them as, you know, and then they are available now, but I have to, I have to upload them to, to everyone. Um, then I did put oh, the no. uh, elevation file in the share file. So. Oh, no, Daniel, I was speaking of the, um, the what we had submitted to the building department, not of what I had sent you uh, oh. earlier. I assume that those documents would be available to everyone to see our more detailed scope of work. Oh, I understand. Oh, no, I didn't. I, I could have accessed them if I'd known they were there, but I, yeah, it's just a different module that it comes through. We have our own and building has their own. Um, Well, it might be again. It might be best if that if we uh, if we all had a chance to uh, if you could send this to us, Danielle, and we can all review it all ourselves rather than try to make last minute decisions here as we all try to work our way through the technology <laughs> to get everything to look at. Because I I I, don't, I look through the pictures and I don't see one that shows the superimposed sign on the whole. Um, um on the whole plaza so which i thought would, would be in there do you see the elevation drawings um the three sheet one the, the very last one that I, I just put in well let me see if i just if i've missed it yeah i because i i didn't see is it, it a jpeg is it a jpeg um it's a it's a pdf what is this um yeah. it's a pdf and it's got a number on it yeah, it's 2021 is the number it begins with. Okay, well, I don't have that yet. Okay. Oh, your, yeah, your share file might just need to refresh. Yeah. I well, I've refreshed it a number of times. <laughs> oh, okay. so We'll try again. Okay. Oh, here we go, 2021. Oh, come on. Okay, so it has it just it has this continuation that goes along. It says three different pictures, and you would line them all up to see um, how it would all fit together. The bottom elevation shows it pretty well. I know it's small, but yeah, the elevation very, at the bottom of the page. Yeah, the other bottom one. Yeah, it does give you the proportions. Yeah. Yep. You enlarge that. It's pretty good. Well, I, yeah. I'll, I'll just say this. I think I think they did a nice job reducing the height of it. If you kind of, on that document, kind of toggle between pages two and three, you can kind of see how how it brought it down. And I think I, I think it still makes the same visual impact from the street without overwhelming well, the plaza. Then, so I'm, I'm in favor of the Changes made here. Yeah, it looks like it matches up to Calabunga's a little better, you know, when you, you know, in relation to it. So it doesn't look like it's out of proportion to the rest of the, uh, the rest of the stuff on there. So that yeah, looks good. Uh, yeah, it looks better. Yeah. Well, what's your pleasure? Do you want to look more at this or you, uh, you feel like you're ready to? make a vote or something on this? I 
but my main concern was the height of, of that. And I, I think they addressed that here. I think one of the other concerns was regarding the, the signage, right? And the brightness of the signage and right. some of butters brought that up. So I don't know if we've addressed that tonight. Um, well, I, I mean, I would, I would assume that the, that the brightness would be, uh, this, oh yeah, we did talk about how, how that would be. I, yeah, I, I'm sorry. This is Joe from Pet Supplies Plus. We did go back to our sign vendor and ask them um, about the lumens. And we typically use green LEDs in our signs, which actually reduces the lumens. And they came back to us and said that the um, typical lumen output would be between 45 to 50 lumens for our building sign. And we do call out on these drawings that a dimmer switch should be put in and we verified that it could be in yeah, case yeah. Uh, it was too bright. Yeah, that's good. And again, the 45 to 50 is not a lot, but I like, the, I like the idea that there is the ability should the, we get any complaints, we can revisit it. And it's not the end of the world. It's maybe, it, you know, it's just a little switch down a few levels, but yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it, but it, I just speaking for myself again, I like, um, I'm, I'm glad you were able to upload the, um, the elevations of the plaza to give context. But I, I think you did what we asked you to do, certainly on the architectural side. And um, you know, I'm I'm happy with that, and I don't want to hold up. You know, personally, I, I don't want to hold up a business from trying to open right now in these tough times. Um, and as long as you're protecting, especially the neighbor interest that that was at the first meeting, um, I'm happy with that. And I I would hope if they're on or if they're, you know, they see the meeting here, they'll they'll understand there's that ability for them to complain if they're if it is in fact too bright, and um, we have a remedy for that versus, you know having it be a fixed LED sign that has no ability to to dim would be not the way to move forward. So I, I appreciate um, that the signage has that flexibility. So I'm good with it. Okay. Um, you also stopped moving, Dave, so. Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to go out? Yeah. Not so, as angry uh, as last time. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, what's your, what's your take on this? Are you, you think you're okay with the uh, changes? Yeah, I agree. I think the, the, the scale of the facade is much more aligned. I think it, it looks like it wasn't, uh, it, it, it fits in with the scale of the rest of the facade okay. now. Right. So I'm happy with that. I think the sign is appropriately sized for the facade. And okay. if we have that dimmer control, I think we've done our job addressing a butter's concern. So okay. uh, I'm in favor of moving forward. Jeremiah? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I look at these elevations. I think that the reduction in height looks a lot better. And I think that if the landlord eventually wants to do something similar with some of those other spaces and we follow a similar kind of sizing setup, it, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't look it wouldn't look piecemeal. It right. would actually the building would be framed nicely. Um, so, yeah, uh, no objections yeah. for me. OK, I just uh, I just still want to discourage from the last minute filings because this is a headache for us and it shouldn't we shouldn't have to do this. We pr we purposely ask for these filings to be done ahead of time so that we have a chance to review them. So um, I don't want to encourage this kind of thing because, you know, this one we might be able to get through, but some will be a whole lot more difficult and it's just not uh, it just doesn't work well. It doesn't give Danielle a chance to review any of the, any, any of it, and make recommendations, which is what her job is to do. So it's everything's last minute, and 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 uh, so I appreciate you guys being cons concerned about this developer and, and concerned about keeping things moved along. And so I'll go with you. Uh, but Danielle, do you have any concerns? To, are you? Um, no, I would just suggest two conditions if we're ready to to vote tonight, and those two conditions would be um, that just confirming that if if the CPC finds that um, the lighting is too bright, that um, that you know the plaza owner or store owner is to 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 work with us to a satisfactory uh, level mm -hmm. of brightness, um, and then that the night light lighting view on the pylon sign needs to match the channel letter um, pattern of the other signs that are on there, um, mm -hmm. and 
I just wanted to confirm that because it's hard to tell from the sign plans whether it will. Mm -hmm. The other um, signs on the pylon all only have their channel letters visible and no background visible at night. And this really should follow the same scheme. So those are the two conditions I would recommend. Daniel, also that we didn't talk about um, whether we are okay with the 30 versus the 32. Um, right, which is probably yeah. talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I think, okay, so uh, we did talk about those other things. Uh, uh, we did talk about the uh, the lighting on the sign as well as the fact that the, the, that the pylon sign, that their sign has to match and be in the same style as the other ones that are there. So, so is there any objection to the 32 inches? It sounds to me like that's what they prefer. Um, I, I don't, again, looking at, it's hard to tell, you know, with the, with the, with what we have for renderings here, but but um, I don't see that, that a couple of inches is going to make a big difference unless so, somebody has. So a just the question is, we get 105 feet versus 92. Daniel, what were what were we at before? Were we were at 105 before? I think the same. I think it was the I, same. I have to go back to the memo that I did from the last time to see what the if I put a calculation in that. Um, Well, you know, we could, what, the one of, if we're going to vote on this tonight, we could simply say that it cannot exceed what it had before, what we looked at before. I, I, I might want to be a little more specific about it just because it could be hard yeah. to put that into. Are you going to try to look up the. Uh... Well, I was going to look to see what I put in my last memo as far as if I put a sign calculation. In the, there, like the only thing I could direct uh, anyone looking at the elevation with the, with the 30s. 32s is that it's right up, you know, against the rake board, you know, the the roof edge, and when you look at the the 30, it drops it down a little bit, and and the ability to drop it down, and then closely, if you look at the original um, from two weeks ago, that also has a little bit more space from the P and the S from the actual roof line. So mm -hmm. I I you know I hate to be really stingy here, but I, I think actually the 30 looks better. Well, they have it both ways, so we can stipulate that. But that's just, I, my, I, you know, that's one person's opinion. I, I, you know, I'd prefer to hear from everybody else, but it, I, I think well, there's more separation and flexibility with the 30. And I, and I actually agree with you, but that's why uh, when we first brought it up, I was asking if the 30 was what we were going with. Um, uh, because I thought that looked the best, and when they told me that that they had actually preferred the 32, you know, I didn't uh, go anywhere with that. But um, I think the 30 looks better myself. I did find my calculations from last time. <laughs> <laughs> it was 111 square feet. The wall space devoted to the store is 747.5 square feet. The sign takes up 15% of the wall. If the sign, the sign can take up to 20% of the wall space um, for the facade if you issue it as part of, you know, as a special permit. So it's it's an exception that you can issue up to 20%. But I was confused as to whether the would the 32 be a 20% and require the special permit and the 30 be compliant. I, I guess I was I didn't have time to like think through the math of that. Yeah, the 30 is 92. What was the compliant? Uh, uh, what's the first? 111 was what she had before. And then 105 is what the 32 is. So the 92 is is you know probably a little less intrusive, and it does fit better. And and what percentage of that would would that be like? Would you still be issuing a special permit for the for the thirty? It was ninety two. Uh, Sorry, I I didn't. I Daniel, what are, what are the rules again? The the percentage. Okay. Of the, um, <laughs> let me go back and read it. No, no, it's okay. I just I don't know it off the top of my head, so I just have to go back and read it off. Okay, so wall signs are limited to ten percent of the wall area. However. Um, under exemptions by special permit, you, you can allow it to be increased to a maximum of 20% of the wall area on which they're displayed. Oh, okay, so previously the sign we looked at took up 15% of the wall. Okay, so you're issuing a special permit anyway, because um, either one, 15%. So 
Yeah, it's over 10%. So, but it's up to you how much bigger. What did you say the rest of the wall space? Seven. Uh, seven hundred forty-seven point five square feet. Although now it might be—is it smaller now because of the reduction in the height of the facade? I have uh, not. Uh, I mean, the area of the new facade is four hundred and seventy-five square feet, and with the square footage that's provided by our sign vendor, at the the thirty-inch sign is at nineteen point five percent of that. Okay. Is that ninety-six square feet, I believe. I believe. And the 30%, you said, is the 32, you said the 32 inches is 19%? The 30 inch is 19.5% of the lowered version of our proposals. Yeah, and what total square footage are you getting for that facade? 475 square feet. Okay, yeah, I'm getting 460. You measure it on the outside line of the whole roof line, all, all that? Yes, all, along the, the trim and everything. Yeah, actually, when I just lower it there now, I do get that. You're right, 475. When I go right down to the bottom, wasn't the other one the original? You didn't count that bottom, uh, call it an architrave or the, you know, that lower field. You didn't count that, I don't think, in the. Is you yeah. showed 105 on the, and uh, I think it's a. Uh, yeah, the 30, the 30 uh, inch is 19, is 19.3. One that was super high, you know. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if the previous calculation counted the bottom or not. I imagine it would have, but. Uh, yeah, I do too, but. Because we had okay. that trim going across the middle of it. Yeah. So at 19, well, I mean, it's a special permit regardless. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the 20%, the 19% worth of the 30 inch sign, right? But, but, but if it's 32, doesn't we, don't we get over the 20%? What percent is it if it's- Yeah, you would be over it. You'd yeah. be over it. The, the, over 30, the 30 gives you 19.5%. 19.3 actually, but- <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> I rounded. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> I, I rounded the uh, the 475. They should have made it 476. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we're we're about right. Yep. Yeah. Um. So let's go with the 30 inch sign, and it's at 19 percent, and if everybody's happy with that, we can move along. Is that okay? Sounds good to me. All right. Sounds good. All right. So um, we have a, do we want to do a motion as amended tonight? Yes. Oh, um, Debbie, yes. Um, just if you approve this tonight for the conditional approval, I have to send it out to the decision out to all of the abutters. I've asked for the envelopes to be sent to me with the abutters, you know, labels and the stamp on it. I haven't received those, so um, I'm not sure what to do at this point about mailing the decision out. It has to be mailed out. Um, and also I never got confirmation or that a check was sent to the transcript and I didn't receive one for the advertisement for $140. We sent the check out last week, early last week. Uh, I believe it was Monday or Tuesday. I get the mail every day. Um, to the North Reading Building Department. Oh. Building department. I mean, well, I'll go over uh, to the down from building. The community, <laughs> okay. not to the building department, but to the. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been dealing with department. I, I sent it to the community planning uh, division, uh, but that was uh, last week, early last week. I've received four certified letters that you sent out to all of the abutters, but I haven't received anything else. Uh, it must be in. It's in limbo somewhere then. Um, do, is there what about any, the envelopes? Uh, the envelopes should have been sent out, uh, I believe. Dustin sent those out last week as well, I believe. Well, again, are we up against something that we need to buy some time on? What's the time frame for sending the decision out? 
I usually send it out like the day after your, the conditional approval has been done. I mean, well, we have be able to do that today. Right. We would have to wait to file the conditional approval, but we can only wait. I think we actually have from the close of the public hearing and the vote that's taken. I think I only have. I have it's either 18 or 20 days to file that. I mean, we never wait that long. We can wait a little longer, but if that if that time runs and we don't have that stuff, it's hard to know what to do. Um, I mean, we just we wouldn't file a decision yet, but we we have to file a decision within the next you know three weeks. Okay, well, a couple things that uh, we need to do right off then. So first, I, I, I do have to open this to the public to see if there's any public comment, uh, since it is a public hearing. Um, does anybody, any, anybody from the public have any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, I, do, we, I think we've gathered enough information. I, are we all set with that? Uh, everybody okay with that? Okay. You all set, Daniel? You... Yeah, I just, it's actually, it's 14 days. So once you close the public hearing and we vote, I have 14 days to, to file with the town clerk and then the decision goes out, you know, that day or the next day. So, so I just wanted to look that up. That we can, that, so we can actually, we can hold a vote and as long as they make sure those envelopes get to Debbie in the next day or so. Yeah. So we can get this uh, out. Then you can go file it and then send it out. What we can do is cancel our first check and resend the other one out uh, under priority mail and make sure it gets to you. Yep. And how about the envelopes? Uh, I'll have to check with Dustin, but I will. Um, uh, I will let Danielle know uh, first thing tomorrow as soon as I can uh, whether they've been sent out. He said they he sent them out, I believe. Okay. Um, See, these are the things that happen that make it difficult to make a decision. That's why we want it. That's why we want the stuff ahead of time. We got to have it. It's just, it's just, it's, you know, you end up making mistakes when you try to do this. So, um, um, but you have the, uh, I guess the board is behind you to give you, get you going. So, um, um, again, um, I've closed the public hearing. If Ryan has the motion and, uh, Make sure in that motion that it is as amended this evening. I do not have the motions. Okay. Uh, do you want me to? Oh, the let me pull it up. Yeah, it's in the. Mind. It should be in the share file, but let me just. Um, it. Danielle, most yeah. of that motion is empty. Remember, we left it blank because I didn't have the plan to fill it in. Right, we didn't have the plan dates. Okay. Um, oh, is that? Do we still not? Do we still not have plan dates? Well, now we do because we have the sheets, but you know, usually what Debbie does ahead of time is copy down the, the dates and everything on the new, the new pages. Um, let me just, well, there are so many sheets. I just don't know if I should. Okay. So for the, okay. I move that the community planning commission vote to approve um, the application uh, for pet supplies plus for 271 main street. Um, including new facade and signage, um, <clears throat> including a special permit to increase the size of the signage. Um, um, as shown on the plans, let me see. The submitted plans, I, I can fill in the dates, but I mean, do we want, do we need the date in the motion? I suppose we do. Um, I just have to read them off the elevations and everything. Sorry. It's not enlarging for whatever reason, so I can't read the date. I'm sorry. Um, 2321 is, well, that's the issue date. So that sheet okay. has all the stuff on it. It says 22321. Is that what's shown on the, is that the plan date? That's on the 2021 uh, 0921 proposed elevations PDF. Yes. Okay. Is that the date on that? That is the date on that plan. Okay. On that Thank plan, you. The R3 sheet number, job number, and so forth. Issue date 22321. Okay. 
Um, and then we also had the, it's just the one that showed the 30. Um, I don't I'm know which one that, that is, but I, if I can. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, which one of these? Oh, here we go. Which one is it? Um, I think it's 443406-3C. I got, two, threes. I got two, two three C's. <laughs> Are they both the same? I'm not sure. Um, Let's have a look. Well, there's no date. Oh, there, there is. Uh, February 2nd, 21 is the date on it. Oh, revised uh, 9-17-21. Showing a 30-inch LED channel letter. Okay. Um, Revised 9-17-21, yes. Yes, okay. Revised 5 21 and 9 21 Yeah. Now we discussed the conditions already. I probably, I don't need to restate them, right? Right, as amended okay. this evening, of course. Yes, okay. I so move. Second. Okay. A motion and a second, any further discussion? Hearing, all in, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, Mr. Clark Carroll? Aye. And Mr. Johnson? Aye. And Mr. Redlock? Aye. And I will be aye as well. Um, okay, you have your approval there. Make sure you get your pay that paperwork and get those envelopes in. And if we have to do any further business, make sure you get this stuff in ahead of time because you can see what a headache it gets to be. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Wow. <clears throat> we have plenty of stuff to look at now that we didn't have this before. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so um, um, the only thing we have left here, do we have any, do, do we have any updates? Do we have any, no ZBAs? Uh, no ZBAs this time. Okay. And um, so the only thing is, um, Selection of a CPC representative, representative to the Facilities Master Plan Committee. <clears throat> um, I've been more or less coerced into doing that, so um, I'm going to try to fill that position um, so that I can bring back as much information from them as possible to hear. Um, maybe even have a little influence. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Um, but just so you'll know, that I'm, I'm gonna I'll, I'll, I'm gonna take care of that. So thanks, Warren. Okay. I'll be yeah, the leader. Thank you. Um, and I think that is our only other item. So other than plenty administrator updates, I'll keep it brief. Um, the oh, uh, Maureen, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go go go. <laughs> uh, Maureen from the transcript let me know that she's got, got a college intern working for her and she would like um, her intern to cover some uh, North Reading related uh, you know government news including uh, CPC meetings which is great I'll be meeting with her soon um, to uh, get to know each other and hopefully we'll be seeing her at some upcoming CPC meetings uh, which is yep. terrific yeah um, we used to have Maureen used to do every one of our meetings for years she was every single meeting she was there um, honestly, everything else is really kind of town meeting related. I think that that's the most, the most yeah. important things are things we've, we've, we've spoken about. Um, I think that's, I think that's all for, for me. Okay. Well, then does anybody have anything they'd like to bring before the commission tonight or you're all good? Then, um, 
Everybody gets off easy tonight, nine o'clock. Oh, <laughs> uh -oh. I, I did uh -oh. just want to mention I quickly one thing. Go I'm ahead. sorry, it'll be fast, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Um, and especially because Chris isn't here tonight, but the uh, Economic Development Committee is, is hosting a reception for, no, I shouldn't say a reception, an information session for businesses. Um, the invitation uh, went out today and will go up by email tomorrow. Um, next Thursday and Friday, there's one in-person session and one virtual session. It's to talk about the, the town meeting warrant article relating to sewer. So uh, eight o'clock on Thursday morning on the 29th, we'll be holding a <clears throat> virtual info session. And then, um, I'm sorry, Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday at eight o'clock, the virtual session. Thursday, the 30th, um, we'll be having a, a three o'clock um, in-person uh, session at the town hall. After our site walk, right? <laughs> yes, That's it'll be that same day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right, right. No one has to go, but if you want to dial in for the yeah. virtual session, um, yeah. Yeah. anyway, I just wanted to but let that, you know. What time is the virtual session? The virtual yeah. session is eight o'clock on Wednesday eight in the morning. morning. Yeah, yeah, see, uh, kind of tough during work days. So. Anyway. That's okay. All. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then um, I guess I'll close the meeting. And uh, thanks very much for everybody for showing up tonight. And um, especially Dave, get from all the way from South Carolina and everybody, you know, <laughs> taking care of kids. I love it. So <laughs> even angry days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're adjourned. So good night, all. Thanks. All for right. Thanks, night. everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.